What I'd like you to show you today is why encoders fail, why customers have problems with them. Um, a lot of people don't realize that encoders send a lot of information really fast. Um, I've set up this small example right here on my bench with a little tiny motor, small drive, and an oscilloscope so you can actually see what's going on. Um, I've got this motor set up and it's putting out a signal and if you watch every once in a while you'll see these little glitches come through and these glitches are what we call noise and they can cause the encoder to give a wrong signal or an erroneous signal which can cause your uh, drive to mess up so if you look down here at the motor one of the things I've noticed on this motor is that this encoder is not well attached okay it vibrates and as it vibrates it puts a physical uh, harmonic into the signal so it actually distorts it and the signal's got to travel quite a way so in addition to that noise it's also going to pick up AC interference from everything in the cabinet now even if it's shielded you're going to see a lot of noise in it so Yaskawa and a couple other companies have come out with the idea that instead of sending a pulsed encoder all the way back to your drive and getting a signal back that looks even worse than this they've decided to put a serial code inside here so it sends this pulse signal to a chip and that chip uh, puts it into a hexadecimal and sends it back to your drive so your drive doesn't have to sit here and figure out which one of these pulses is correct or not so also there's there's a couple of different types of encoders you have the, the rotary pulse encoder and you have absolute encoders a good way to tell if you have an absolute encoder is there's usually a battery right here next to the motor so if your drive loses power it keeps power to the encoder and a lot of people don't change that battery they see it there they don't realize what it is or what it's for and they just don't worry about it two years down the road you got a dead battery power fails you bring your system back up and all of a sudden it's not working it says your encoder doesn't know where it's at so you automatically have to home the entire system back out it's the same thing as if you had pulled this encoder off turned it around stuck it back on there the drive doesn't know where home position is so it's real critical that if you have stuff out there in the field that you maintain it well that you make sure that your encoder is is well attached to the motor you don't want it to flop around you don't want it to vibrate and you don't want it to be out of a line where it's going to run you can pretty much feel it and tell whether it's it's vibrating you can feel the whole thing um, if it has a battery on it you want to make sure that you always change that battery um, and I mean not every day but when it gets down to about 1.2 volts you know you might want to take a look at ordering a new one so that when it gets down to one volt you can just pop it out and put in a new one you don't want to change the battery while the power is off for the simple reason that you'll have to rehome your system again um, that's pretty much about it one of the things you want to look at if you look at the signal you want your signal to be really clean you don't want to see the distortion and the flashes going in between there it's the same if you had a uh, a resolver or if you had a tachometer you want that signal to be flat you don't want to see a lot of spikes in it or anything like that the cleaner the signal the easier it is for your machine to get that signal and process it it doesn't have to go back and ask over and over and over what's my speed where am I at um, and the faster it turns the worse it's going to get the more mistakes it's going to make so anyway that's pretty much it um, you can watch your encoder go up or down if you have an oscilloscope if, if someone in your plant doesn't have one, you may want to ask them if they want to invest in them. They're not real expensive, and they're definitely helpful in troubleshooting problems, especially out in the field when you're out there and you can't see what's going on. And money is time out there. So all you can do to save them money is going to help them. And that's pretty much all I got for you today. So I hope you uh, learned something, and have a good day.